So protections, penetration and protection reduction are fairly simple concepts but are often misunderstood by a lot of the player base, especially with how they interact with each other. So today we're going to cover everything there is to know from the basics of how penetration works against protections, plus some more advanced stuff like the protections formula and combining protection reduction with penetration. So before we start, a lot of the numbers, formulas and interactions I'll be referencing in this video are pulled from the Word of Thoth by Flareboot, which I'll link in the description if you do want to read more into this type of stuff. So the most important piece of information in my opinion when discussing protections and penetration would be the protections formula. This essentially details how much damage you will take at a certain level of protections from a damage source. The formula goes, initial damage multiplied by 100 over 100 plus protections is equal to total damage taken. So plotting this in Excel, we can get a graph of how many protections you have against the damage you'll take as a percentage of the initial damage. With zero protections yielding 100% damage and 325 or maximum protections yielding only 23.5% damage. So effectively, at maximum protections, you will mitigate 76.5% of damage enemies throw at you. That's a huge number, which is why penetration is so damn important and smite. So this graph is non-linear and basically that means it's not a straight line and buying more protections is less effective the more you already have. For example, buying a Genji Scar which has 70 magical protections when you're already at 50 will bring down the damage you take from 66.7% of initial damage to 45.8%. So a 20.9% decrease overall in magical damage you'll take from a source. Whereas a warrior for example that already has 200 magical defense and then buys a Genji's Guard they will go from 33.6% down to 27.2% damage taken, so only a 6.4% decrease. So as you can see, buying defenses is much less effective the more protections you have overall. So if you've already stacked up 250 physical defense, it might be worth buying more into health or magical defense instead of investing so heavily into physical if you want to be more tanky overall. So how does penetration fit into all of this? Well, at zero protections, obviously the target takes the full initial damage. Essentially, you're dealing true damage. Say the enemy is a squishy hunter and only has 30 protections. That's still going to bring down the damage they take from you to 77% of the initial value. So to gain back that 23% lost damage, you want to buy penetration. For low protection values like 30, flat penetration is the most effective choice. Simply buying 30 penetration from something like a Brawler's Beatstick and the Crusher will increase your damage dramatically. Not only will the stats on the items themselves boost your damage, that 30 penetration will make you deal effective true damage to a target with 30 protections instead of a 70% of the value like we saw earlier. Since protections are more effective at lower values, buying plenty of flat pen against squishy targets is the best way to go. Against tanks however, it gets a little bit more complicated. Tanks will often build upwards of 200 protections in a given match and no matter how much flat pen you buy, you're going to have a hard time breaking through all those defenses. That's where percentage penetration comes in. Items like Titan's Bane and Obsidian Shard will ignore enemy protections by percentage according to their total protections, making it extremely effective against high protection enemies but almost useless against squishy targets. Obsidian Shard for example ignores 15 up to 45% of the enemy protections depending on how many they have up to 200 maximum. So if the enemy in question has 200 protections, you get the full 45% penetration from Obsidian Shard, meaning you ignore 90 of the enemy's protections, more than any flat penetration item in the game could give you. But that same Obsidian Shard against someone with only 30 protections will ignore 15% of 30, so 4.5 penetration effectively against the Squishy. Compare that Obsidian Shard against something like a Spear of Desolation in that case, and you can plainly see it's extremely ineffective versus Squishy targets, but extremely effective against tanks. So if you're looking to just kill Squishies, then stick to Flat Pen, but often a combination of both can allow you to deal with both tanks and Squishies alike. Since flat penetration applies after percentage penetration, you don't actually lose any effectiveness on your obsidian shard for buying that spear of desolation. It'll simply calculate the obsidian shard penetration first and then take 15 from the spear off that value at the end. So penetration isn't the only way to deal with protections, there's also a protection reduction. This does what it says on the tin and reduces enemy protections. This of course benefits teammates as well and protection reduction applies before any penetration effects. This is where the common saying of don't build execution yet with titan's bane comes from. So taking that enemy from earlier with 200 protections, Titan's Bane alone would give 80 penetration. However, if you use Executioner first, that would reduce the enemy protections down by 36% to 128. Then Titan's Bane applies after the Executioner and applies only to the 128 protections. So Titan's Bane at 128 protections gives 31% penetration. So it would effectively have 39.7 penetration instead of the 80 we found before. So in this certain case, Titan's Bane is only half as effective as it would have been without the Executioner, that's where the saying comes from. The thing you have to understand though, is that it's not necessarily always bad to build both of these together. It's a common myth that someone started ages ago, just because it's inefficient doesn't mean it's not the best way to deal with tanks for gods like Hunters. 
since the combination of these two items gives 112 total pen instead of just 80 with Titan's Bane, no other two item combo in the game can give as much penetration against a tanky target as these two do, which is why Hunter pen builds often include both of these to absolutely melt tanks. Same code supplies with building Demonic Grip and Obsidian Shard together. They function nearly identically to the physical equivalents of Executioner and Titan's Bane, and thus are worth building in certain situations even if they are slightly inefficient. For example, if a Freya really needs to deal with tanks that are giving her trouble, picking up both of these items will result in easily over 100 pen to boost her damage against those tanky targets. This applies similarly with building Spear of the Magus with Obsidian Shard as well. Since Spear has up to 50 protection reduction on it that applies before Obsidian Shard's penetration, it will reduce the effectiveness slightly. For those of you who are curious, the exact order of the application of these different effects goes percentage protection reduction, then flat protection reduction, then percentage penetration, and finally flat penetration. So even with flat protection reduction items such as Void Shield or Spear of the Magus, they will reduce the effectiveness of further percentage penetration items but won't affect any percentage protection reduction items like Demonic Grip or Executioner, since flat values always apply after the percentage. This type of complicated stuff only applies with percentage values though. If you simply stick to flat protection reduction with flat penetration, nothing bad happens. That's why you can easily stack a Spear of the Magus with a Divine Ruin and have no problems. It will simply apply the protection reduction and then subsequently apply the flat penetration, since adding 50 to 10 is 60 no matter in what way you add them. So as you can see, penetration is extremely important. Given how much your damage is reduced by even an enemy with 30 protections, it's clear that pen is the most effective way to boost your damage against enemies to a point. Of course, building 70 flat pen is probably overkill against a squishy and you're better going into other things, but at least getting enough pen to reduce their protections a bit is essential in this game. Another thing that's worth a quick mention is percentage or flat mitigation values, such as Cabracken's passive, Warrior's Blessing or Spirit Rose's passive. These values act completely separately from protections and thus are not affected by or linked to penetration in any way. Buying more penetration will not increase the damage you deal versus mitigation values. Even true damage values that ignore protections entirely, such as from Bacchus Butcher Blades or Sir Ket Ultimate, they will all be reduced by mitigation values, so keep that in mind. One of the few ways to actually reduce the damage of something like a Sir Ket Ult is with an item like Spirit Robe, since it will proc once she ults you, but I digress. So before we end this one off, I want to talk quickly about Kin Size. While it's not strictly a penetration item, it functions very similarly to Titan's Bane and Obsidian Shard, but the damage it deals is physical. So that means it's not true damage, so buying more penetration makes Kin Size much more effective. That's why often in Hunter builds you'll see them consist of these three items, Kin Size, Executioner and Titan's Bane. Having these three combined makes melting tanks a piece of cake since your extremely high pen combined with the fact you're dealing 5% max health damage to tanks means you shred very easily. But similarly to Titan's Bane, Kin Size and Dust Builds that include the item are naturally weak against squishy targets, since it has that double dip effect where you're dealing a lower percentage of the enemy's health and they also have less health in the first place. So instead of 5% of 3000 health against a tank for example, you're only doing 3% of 2000 health against a squishy, so 150 damage versus 60. So you gotta be careful when building a Kins and Pen build versus a crit build on Hunters and some Assassins. Crit builds work extremely well against squishies that get bursted in 3 autos, but without double percentage penetration and kin size damage, you will struggle against tanks. So you gotta analyse the current game and what's giving you trouble. Oftentimes your mage and assassin can do the work of killing the squishies and you're free to melt the enemy frontline with a pen build, but sometimes you need to be the one bursting those squishies, in which case crit is better, so you get my point. Anyways, that's about it for this mini guide. Hope you guys enjoyed, and if you want more of this type of stuff, be sure to let me know what I should cover next, and as always, subscribe for more stuff exactly like this in the future, and I'll catch you guys later. Peace out, you nerds.